Hello, everyone. This is Lori and Ruth. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing all very well today. Yeah, we hope you guys are doing great. Uh, this has been so much fun for Ruth and I to do the Pick Your Flower series. And I just keep talking. <laughs> because we both love to talk and we like to talk with each other. And... <laughs> And talking about flower essences is one of our favorite things to do because we like to say, oh, do you think that they're an oak or do you think they're a mimulus or wow, oh yeah, maybe I'm having a heather day today because all I'm doing is talking about myself. You know, I mean, <laughs> we have fun with bog flower remedies. And today our flower is mimulus. And mimulus is about daily fears. Like <laughs> I, I told Ruth when I came back from Canada, uh, we arrived in Edmonton, Canada to see my grandson play hockey. And my daughter and I didn't, didn't think about it or my grandson about buying us a ticket, right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and there's 17,000 people who arrive at this arena. Okay, so it's jam packed. And luckily, we get in a line where we can get a seat. Otherwise, we wouldn't got a seat. So we're walking up all these stairs, and, and they had escalators too, thank God, because we were in the nosebleed section. Well, I have a challenge with heights. <laughs> and heights really do i can't it's like when i get up really high in a stadium like that mm -hmm. i i think i'm gonna fall down oh yeah 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 i think there's a lot of people feel like that i would be one of them for for sure I would be one of those. Yeah. and it's like with escalators i remember the first time that i was to go down the escalator by myself because my mother had three little kids right mm -hmm. and we were just three and a half years apart and i'm the oldest <laughs> So yeah. she like tells me, okay, Laura, you have to go down the escalator by yourself. And I just knew I, I, I was just petrified. How yeah. was I, I, that looked so far down. Yeah. I, was so I, know, I know exactly what you mean because I was in London last summer with uh, my daughters because it was my youngest daughter's 21st and we went to London for the weekend to have a girly weekend and do shows and one of the underground tube stations that we went into is King's Cross. And it's a really, really old, old Victorian um, um, underground. And it's so steep. And not only that, but when you're on the escalators going down to particular platforms, they're wooden. So they're like... It, it's and they kind of like creak and moan and and a lot of them have been replaced because there was a very bad fire there a number of, what a long time ago a number of years ago a couple of decades ago but a lot of them have been replaced but they still have that feel about them so you just think one you're going down into the bowels of you know the earth or whatever and then there's the noise the heat it, it becomes a little bit overpowering yeah yeah <laughs> so so, you know, it's interesting when you get in those kinds of positions, how you can have this form of fear that comes up. And that's yeah. really how, what Mimulus is all about. And my daughter looked at me and I go, you know, and I was holding on to the, I was on one side here. I was holding on to this wall. I was touching it. And she goes, well, mom, what are we going to do? And I said, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. I'm going to get over it. Face it and go through it. That's yeah. right. And yeah. that's what Mimulus is about. It's about that beautiful yellow flower helping us face it and get through it. And <laughs> I think that Mimulus was with me that, that, that night. And I got through it. I was okay. I was able to watch the game. Mm -hmm. Then we spotted another place where we could go down and sit where no one was sitting. And so we yeah. went there and the like the second, you know, second quarter of the game. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was funny because I hadn't been up that high in a stadium before in years to, you know, realize yeah. that I still had this yeah. fear of heights. Well, you know, I'm a huge rugby fan. And so 
whenever we go to these matches in these stadiums, there is no way you will ever find me up there. I did it twice and I really, really thought I was going to lose my life. I was that upset about it. So, yeah, I just won't even go. I have to be within a certain amount of, you know, um, levels from the pitch or there's just no way I'm going. I'll watch it on telly. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, next time, if you, next time if you I'm not even through. facing that fear. I'm facing that fear, and I'm running in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time, if you have to be up in the nosebleed section like I was, you make sure you take your mimula. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we didn't imagine that there was going to be that the whole stadium was going to be filled that there was yeah, yeah. i mean they are i mean you know you, you don't quite think it's these big events but they are big events because in the local community they're huge so yeah. everywhere's going to be sold out yeah absolutely and i mean it's not just kind of that's kind of a bit of an extreme i suppose because you're, you're talking about where you've also suffered from vertigo and um those kind of challenges and also being in a crowd i mean that's a good one just being in a crowd even on the level ground is another one if you don't like that sensation then mimulus is perfect for it but even on a smaller scale like for instance if you know oh here's the dreaded one you know you have to go to the doctor and another one of mine you have to get a shot for something or other or you have to give blood now that's my one is having to go to get a blood test done because um, I've told you this before, but when I was young and I went to a convent school, um, all, I mean, from the time I went to school at four up until I was 18. So it was a convent primary school and then secondary school, which is the system that we have here in Ireland. And when I was about seven or eight, one particular nun um, liked to always have a sewing needle in the lapel of her habit. And whoever was reading or doing a maths problem or whatever question you had to answer, she would call you to the top of the class where she would stand and she'd say, give me your hand. And you'd give her your hand because you dare not do otherwise. And she would hold your hand the whole time you were either writing out the equation on the board or you were reading a passage from something. And if you hesitated, made an error, um, maybe took too many breaths, you were taking too long, you were rushing through, whatever the reason was, it really didn't matter. She would stab you with this sewing needle. So you, you probably learned very quickly, you know, to get through your problems or to get through your paragraphs perfectly and really doing as best as you could. And um, it wasn't at the time where you could run home to mom and dad and say, oh, you know, this nun is picking on me, she's, you know, nasty or whatever. You just had this dread because you couldn't tell any other adults because one, they would never have believed you. Two, it just wasn't the society thing to go against a religious order. Um, so you kept still, you know, and you weren't the only one. I mean, it wasn't like you were being singled out. Everybody kind of got it. Um, but it did ingrain in me this fear of needles. And to this day, and I'm now 58 in the summer, so this is a long time ago and it still affects me every single day. If I have to go and give blood, no matter what, no matter who does it, no matter how good they are, I will still pass out literally because I am so terrified of the sensation, mm -hmm. you know? And I know logically I shouldn't be and I tell myself logically I shouldn't be. So well, I will treat myself it's with trauma. You know? Yeah, it is. It's, it's absolutely it's a trauma. And um, for years, I never spoke of it. Never spoke of it because it was, I suppose, it was just the way things were. You just didn't talk about them. So um, now I'll tell anybody who wants to know or who makes fun of me because I don't like needles. But apart from that, if I know I'm going to go and um, have to do one of these tests, then you betcha, I've got my rescue remedy and I've got my mimulus with me and I probably take it for about two or three days beforehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, because mimulus uh, is so important for these things. And like you said, the rescue remedy for this trauma that yeah. you have. Yeah, it's so important to take the two together in that situation. Yeah. Yes, because 
that is that is such a big trauma as a yeah. small child for someone to be sticking a needle in your hand and holding your hand. It's it's a very odd thing because it's a, it, it's a form of torture. It's what yes. it is. Yeah. It's like I'm nice and I'm holding your hand yeah. and yeah. I'm giving you the support. But yeah. if you just don't do it right, I'm going to stick you with this needle. So it's very yeah. It's very it's very dramatic and it's very traumatizing. It is actually yes. yes. I would have to say so. And yeah. it's very it's very. There was she had some very she had some mental ill issues there going on, huh? Do you think? Yeah, <laughs> I think. <laughs> and she knew it. Yeah, she knew it because sometimes when she was particularly nasty, she would then make me stay behind class, and I would be, oh, "What's going to happen now?" And what she would do is she would disappear back to the convent, and she would arrive back ten or fifteen minutes later with a bag of sweets for me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I know. She yeah. really Needless to say, I still her. didn't tell on her because I wouldn't have told on her regardless. Um, but I did enjoy the sweets and so did my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at least you got something, got something out of it. Yeah, we got something really, for our terror and our really trauma. really mentally ill, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Thank and, goodness uh, I would have to say that she was probably one of very few who had that sadistic tendency in her. But I don't want to portray that Mimulus is just for those kind of extreme um, fears because it can really be for everyday fears and that's more what Mimulus is about. So for instance, like if you have, um, you're, you're starting a new job, there's an easy one. You're starting a new job, everybody, no matter who they are, no matter how confident they are, will always feel a little anxiety a little bit of fear about how you're going to be accepted how you're going to be viewed are you going to add merit to the place you're going to work there's all those things that you can put a finger on and you can actually express what it is that's going through your your mind at the time and what you're feeling and that's what minimalist is about so if you have a child starting school they're afraid they're not going to make friends. They, they can tell you what they're afraid of, even if they're only small. The teacher won't like me. Oh, this, you know, I, 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 there's too many people. I, how am I going to make any friends? And that kind of a situation. It can be just something that's really, I'm not going to say simple because it's not simple. Every situation is complex depending on how you're feeling towards it. But it's those things that you can name. And that's really the, because there's, a, there, there's the other flower aspen, which is for stuff that you cannot name. So if you're feeling really fearful and anxious and overly, um, I'm, I'm going to say stressed, but really it's more kind of like you, you, you are, you're afraid of what's going to happen, but you, you can't understand why, because there's nothing that says, you know, that screams at you what it is. Then in that case, it would be aspen. But when you can name it or when the person or the child can name it or for instance like if you have an animal if you have your your pet dog and say for instance he's been next door to your neighbors and he stood on something and you know cut his foot or something and you find that the dog the next time or when the dog is peeled that you're going towards the neighbors and he starts pulling back you know and acting a little fearful you know it's because he can put a name on it you can say i'm not going there because i'm going to get hurt again so that would be another really good um, instance where you could use Mimulus just by itself. Yeah, and I think, you know, people who are afraid to drive a car, they know it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, afraid to get on an airplane. Yeah. Uh, you know, Drive into the city center when you live in the countryside. You know, there's right. too many lanes, there's too much traffic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or to yeah. go drive through a canyon. I know that yeah. that was always a big <laughs> deal for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then driving in France, I had to drive through a canyon all the time. So yeah, I got there's that. another one. Going to a different country, driving on the other side of the road. I do it all the time. I go to France, I drive on one side, I come back to Ireland, I've got to immediately go, no, we're on the other side. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I think these these things like this, you know, and and I think during COVID, people became got indoors more and then it it what it did is it made people more fearful of getting out. 
Yeah, I think it did actually make people a little bit more agoraphobic, actually. Because yes. They were fearful of mixing with other people. Um, fearful of how they, not, not just, oh, I might catch something, but also fearful of how they would react to you. Because, oh, you're out and about. What are you doing out and about? And then I think that's just really continued on. Yes. Because we're, we're past that stage, but we're still seeing the effects and the ramifications of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, uh, uh, like you're saying, it's something that mimulus could really help people with. They could just take four drops under their tongue. And yeah. Put it in a water bottle, sip it throughout the day. If you don't want to, um, for instance, if you have, because in the States you've got the... Um, alcohol-based version and you've also got the glycerin vegetable uh base as well not so much on this side of the the the, the sea shall we say um but if that's the case and you only have the alcohol-based one to hand but it's a child or an animal or an elderly person or you're not quite sure what their situation is then you can always just put it on their skin you can put it on their pulse points which is a really good way to do it because it just will be absorbed that way without the alcohol having an effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think that's a great point you're making, um, Ruth, because with my kids when they were little, a lot of times when I would go to use flower essences on them, it was so much easier just to put it on their pulse or the back of their neck, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, or an animal's the same way. You know, if you yeah. have an animal who's really afraid uh, and you know, like you said, it's like getting a horse to cross water and this horse. Yeah, it, it, well, it's when you water. find whether it's a person or an animal that they're a bit skittish is probably mm -hmm. the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. Because Dr. Batch talks about mimulus type being that sort of very fragile, kind of delicate kind of personality um, where they are quite nervous about a lot of things, not just one particular thing that would be the type and the type would mean that they're in that sort of negative state you know that's not going go into detail now but it's just to kind of think of that like if you know someone who's kind of uh, it made me laugh actually because yesterday knowing this was coming up because yesterday in the emotional and intelligence workshop that um you were doing you referenced elizabeth bennett and in pride and prejudice and if you think about it, if you've ever seen the movie or the series or read the books her mother constantly talks about the state of her nerves. So, and the husband replies, oh, you know, your nerves, dear, have been my greatest companions all these years. So he knows all about her nerves and how she, you know, reacts. But th that's the kind of person that you're looking at is somebody who just, you know, I can't cope, it's just too much. And they're a bit like that all the time because everything is nearly fearful for them. And that mm -hmm. would be a mimulus type person. Yes, and she knew her fears. She knew her fears. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Her daughters yeah. would be out on the street because at that yeah. time, you know, a fam, the cousin, the yeah. cousin was. Well, they'd nothing. They'd nothing other to add to society except for to be somebody's aunt and keep the house. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, it's it's interesting to to see how that movie plays so many different types of flower remedies. But when you, you, you could use them out, all. You could use them nearly all in that movie alone. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> could. Actually, I must do it sometime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the beginning to end. I've, I've seen it so many times. And yesterday <laughs> when I said that in the class, it was just, you know, it just came automatic. I hadn't planned it at all, right? And I was like, oh, yes, you know, Mr. Darby, right? And, and Elizabeth. And um, it's, it's interesting that she is definitely the mimulus type person. Mm. And in our Flower Essence course, that's what you learn. You learn what your type remedy is and then how yeah. you find the type remedy for your clients. And it, and we're doing that right now. We're in our we're in module seven. In fact, we start in like 30 minutes. Our class starts. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it starts in 30 minutes. And uh, it's interesting to see how each person sees themselves and gets more of a deeper understanding of themselves when they realize their type remedy. 
like yeah. Elizabeth's mother, you know, yeah. she knows it's her nerve. She knows she has these fears, right? <laughs> and, and everybody else does as well. <laughs> and then, like her husband says, I've been living them with a, living with them. They've been my constant companion, you know. <laughs> I love that line in the book. I absolutely love it. I just because he's just he's he's sarcastic, but it's gently done, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's 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 validating her in some way, saying, "Yes, I know that that's the way you are," but yet he's being sarcastic, and in yeah. um, but it's done in in a good a good sense with a good sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. A dry good sense of humor. Yeah. There, 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 there is a whole podcast series we could do. Pride and Prejudice and the Bachelor. We could do the, the whole Pride and Prejudice of flower essences of all the characters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would that that would be really fun though. It would be. Yeah, that would be works. great. So we, we hope you guys understand how to use mimulus. It's for everyday fear. So you know if you're afraid to go out of your home. You're afraid to drive a car. You're afraid to go down an escalator. You're afraid of heights. You know the fear. That's when you. And also, when you know something is coming up, and it makes you nervous. Uh, you know what? I think yeah. you're so right about that, Ruth. And like Ruth said, you know, when you know that you have yeah. something coming up that triggers that fear. Yeah. Yeah. Like her with needles. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I never mention anything about needles around Ruth because I know it is a we're laughing about it, but it's yeah. it but you can see the consequences of how it's affected in her life. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I refused. I mean when I when I gave birth to my three children, I refused to have a needle come anywhere near me for anything. No gas and air, no nothing. Just, I could have gone out in the woods. <laughs> would have been a lot cheaper. <laughs> well, it sounds like you and I both were the same. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I wasn't coming from a place of, oh, I'm going to be all natural and all the rest. I was just, I'm not having a needle come near me. That's it. Yes. Yes. Well, it was too traumatic yeah. for you from yeah. your situation yeah. that you had had, you know. Have you seen the size of those needles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when you were a child at that time and it was still where you didn't tell your parents the things that happened. Oh, no, no, no. You wouldn't have dared to tell your parents because you, you would have got it twofold. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And your parents yeah. would have believed the, the nun if she had said, hey. Why? Yeah. We're, gen, we're, we're we're Gen X, you know. We did we didn't come home and tackle tail about anything, you know. No, and and so it's 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 good now that people can say what's happened to them, hmm. uh, and they can you know, and children can express themselves to their parents and say, "Hey, listen, you know, this teacher. I remember I hmm. took uh, a what do you call it." I had to go and sit in the office. Oh, detention. Detention. Oh, I, you got detention. I did detention instead of, and because the teacher wanted me, it was in high school, and the teacher, he wanted me to come in after class, and I knew he was a pervert. Oh, that's different. And okay. so I went, the, so I had to go to the vice principal, and... Uh, the vice principal says, well, you're going to get detention for two weeks. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, great. You know, I was yeah, no problem. Later on, and of course, I didn't tell my parents that I thought mm -hmm. he was a pervert, right? And later on, he was convicted. He was oh, convicted. Oh, wow. Okay. And, um, and, and. So you uh, had the foresight to go, I am not. You know, because now, bearing in mind, when you go back a few years when we were both in school, as we said, you wouldn't have dared one go up against authority. So what strength of character you had and what foresight you had to just go, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I, I knew because yeah. uh, the reason I knew it is because he was my algebra teacher, right? And he mm. would stand over me during the test and look down my top. And were, were you allowed to wear what you wanted? Excuse me? Did you wear what you wanted in school? Yes, we were. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so if, if, if I had a talk that, you know, was like yeah. this and maybe it was loose necked or something, he could, you know, he just stand yeah. over me. Well, you know, it's not very easy to take an algebra test when you have the teacher standing over your shoulder, right? No, of course not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, of course, the other students, they noticed this too, mm -hmm. right? Especially my guy friends. And I had one guy friend who always, because he was K and I was H, he was always behind me in class because we were in alphabetical order, right? <laughs> and so he's watching this the whole time. And he's like, oh, man, this guy is weird, Lori. I'm yeah. like, I know he's weird. He's just a client not going in after class with this guy. No way, Jose. They can kick me out of school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So I think uh, nowadays it's great that kids can express themselves. And yeah, it's a lot more open. Yeah. It's a lot more open. Yeah. I know still people don't tell because they're being threatened, hmm. you know, and, but Mimulus is something that can really help people with their everyday fears and help them get through, you know, their, their, their yes. known fears, these truly yeah. known fears. And Mimulus is in Rescue Remedy too, isn't it? No, 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 can, no, no Clematis. Yeah. It's Clematis, Star yeah. Bethlehem, Rock Rose. Cherry Plum. Cherry Plum, and I'm missing one. Impatience? Impatience, okay. yes. Sorry, impatience, beg your pardon. Yeah. Impatience, yes. <laughs> there goes that. There goes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think it's also because I'm just back from France and sort of, you know, when I was over there, obviously speaking in French all the time as well, you're, you know, oh, it's impatience, yes. Mm -hmm. Impatience, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Impatience, yes. But now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so see, you can add the mimulus like like Ruth does. Mm. You, you know, it's it's really something that's traumatic for you. Yeah, and very stressful. If you know you're coming up to a stressful situation, you know, for instance, you could be getting married. You could be having to make a speech at someone's wedding. You could be having to, you know, you're going to a corporate do, and the entertainment is karaoke, and everyone is going to have their turn. Well, I'm terrified of doing that. Well, okay, maybe some of us aren't, but, you know, most people are. And that would be an ideal, okay, not every day, but a normal daily something that could happen that would make you be really nervous and fearful. So that's a good example as well, something like that. Yeah, and you could always bring Rescue Remedy with you and yeah. with us together. Yeah, honest, everybody should have Rescue Remedy in their, in their purse or in their okay. bag or in their car because it is just, it's a little wonder. It sure is. It is the it is the bouquet yeah. full of beautiful flowers that helps yeah. us with stress, trauma. It, it is the proverbial do not knock it until you've tried it. Because even um I mean I obviously because I've been using them for a long time, I have everyone I know practically using it. And mm -hmm. the first time I got them to use rescue remedy in particular, because I always start with rescue remedy. Um they're amazed they are just amazed at how quickly it's kind of like it's just it takes the edge off that total sort of spiral that you're nearly getting yourself into mm -hmm. and it just kind of calms everything right down no matter what the situation is it could be you know a child having a temper tantrum it could be whatever it happens to be and that's what really starts people they may not necessarily then go and learn all about the other rest uh, the other remedies that are available but they'll start branching out bit by bit so that's why i would say you know again don't knock it till you try it and rescue remedy always 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 have rescue remedy to hand because it is it's a fantastic fantastic blend it sure is yeah. and and um we hope you guys now know a little bit more about Mimulus and, of course, Rescue Remedy. I think every time we talk, we end up talking something a little bit, something about Rescue Remedy because we both love it so much. Yeah. And we've seen yeah. such beautiful results with it. And it combines um, very well with the others. And next week, we'll be here at the same time. Uh, Ruth, are you gone next week? Are you gone to France next week? Uh, yeah, I won't be, not Wednesday, but we could do it Thursday. We could switch to Thursday. Okay, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see, huh? Okay. What, next week, we'll let you guys all know. Yeah. Um, and Ruth, I don't recall what next week is because we have it all planned. Um, 
but I've been teaching so many classes and writing so much information that I haven't looked. And so Ruth's going to let you know next week, um, our flower of the week. This week it's Mimulus, and next week we'll have one. We also want to remind you guys to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you're in our Facebook groups and also uh, sign up for our flower essence retreat so you can really learn how to use flower essences. And Ruth's checking out our flower of the week next week. I am. We're going to start with garlic. Garlic. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to be that's going to be me interviewing you. That's going to be yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, so next week is garlic. So we're going to mm -hmm. be cleaning out that energy field. Yeah. And uh, um, we're going to be talking. Oh, about well, then if it's cleaning out, then maybe we could talk a little bit about crab apple, too. Yes. OK. Yes. Yes. Well, maybe maybe we'll do crab apple instead. Let's stay on the Bach flowers. Okey doke. Let's do crab that. apple. So next week will be crab apple, and that's all about cleansing. So we'll talk about that next week. We'll let you know um, what our schedule is next week because we yeah. have to go back to France unexpectedly. She just found out today, and so we'll let you guys know. We'll send we'll you a message, and we hope you all have a beautiful day. We hope that you see our shame and blame uh, emotional intelligence class. It will be up until Sunday evening, midnight Pacific time. Yes. So, so just reminding that's up on the blog page. It's the first article and it's also in our Facebook groups. So, and on our YouTube channel as well. So the Facebook, uh, I'll say it again. The Facebook groups are the master essential oil class group. And then the um, Essential Emotional Healing and Essential Oils group as well. But you can check it out on the YouTube channel and also it will be on the blog. Yes. And we sent out an email to everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you've given us your email, uh, you will receive the email with the direct link to both videos and to the slides. So that's where the slides are on uh, www.loriharges.com. And you go to our blog under resources, and it will be in that information there. We'll put the link below when we get off here to let you guys all see that so you can download the slides. And we can't wait to have you all at our Flower Essence Retreat. So don't forget your essentials. Use your common sense. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.